Hi everyone. Happy Wednesday. I'm going to do a live video every Wednesday. It's been three in a row now. <clears throat> so welcome to this third edition of putting resin on something. And the last two videos created a bunch of questions in the comments. So I'm going to go through some of those questions. And if you have any more questions, hopefully I can help you. Um, and let me just walk around and chat while people join before we get going. So we are in the uh, studio space of Art Resin in Canada in quarantine. The last couple of videos we did was resining this huge canvas piece. It turned out great. Then the video after that was this one. I just love it. So this one was on wood. This one was on canvas. Hello everyone, thanks for watching. We're gonna be resining some things and answering some questions in the studio. And this one I, I just finished. And I am so happy with all of them. Look at all the color. <clears throat> now, let's get to some questions, why don't we? So, oh and I wanna say hello to my mom who's watched my last ones, hi mom. So the first question we have here is from Chevy Lalore. It says, do I need to use a torch on my painting after I pour art resin? The torch heats up the resin and then it makes it runnier. So the bubbles just shoot out faster. So it helps you make sure you don't have any bubbles. Do you have to use it? If you were to heat up your room, put some heaters on in the room and then resin, maybe you don't need to use a torch. But I always use a torch because then, like why risk having a bubble, you know? The next question is from Ashley Griffin. I have a question, I'm new, hold on. Oh, she, your question is about how to cover large pieces of art so that dust doesn't get on it. I mean, if you ever come in contact with a really big cardboard box that you can just cut, save those. We have a bunch of those. And let me flip, I'll show you one thing that, that uh, Jasmine in the studio made for us. See that big thing, the clear thing? So it's made out of, just, it was just scrap wood that we have. Like look at, just thrown together. Um, it's taped on this plastic. It's very light. And then you just put something at each of the four corners, put it over and you can still see the painting. I love that you can still see it too. So good question. Let's go on to the next question. And then we'll get resonating some stuff. Okay. The next question was, can you use resin on an oil painting? <clears throat> the answer is yes, but someone might tell you you need to wait six months before you do it, before all the oil is left. This was an oil painting that I resined. This pinky stuff was all white. So I resined it too early and there was still some chemical reaction going on underneath the resin and it made the white turn pink but I actually kind of like it. Anyways, I sanded it down and I'm gonna pour another coat of resin over it or I was, I was thinking maybe putting some more color in there, I don't know. It was inspired like this piece by Emily Carr. I just loved that piece. And somehow that's the one I'm coming up with. Anyways, so if you want to resin an oil painting, let it dry for a really, really long time. Next question. Oh, how do you photograph resin art? Great question. We actually got this guy. See, how to professionally photograph your artwork featuring Jeff George. So we made this video, how to photograph your resin artwork like a pro. So watch that, because I'm not gonna answer it nearly as good as Jeff George does. How is everyone? <clears throat> it's crazy times, it's, it's chaos. Why don't you put on your mask? Uh, you don't have to wear a respirator when you're using art resin because there's no solvents, meaning there's no VOCs, meaning there's nothing that evaporates into the air that you have to worry about breathing in. So that's why I don't have to make a mask. And we have all the, um, the certificates and the science and the um, data that makes us comfortable to do that. This will be exciting. Oh, Annette Van Eaton. Thank you for the enthusiasm. 
Wow. Maybe it could be exciting. I never considered that. Next question. What's the clip called for the torch? So see, I took a picture of it. That's the clip that goes on the torch that um, makes the flame, instead of going straight, it fans it out. And that was a good question. What do you call this thing? So we ended up calling it a, a flame spreader, I think. Something like that. But on artresin.com, you can get it there. And if you buy them, then Ollie, the CFO of Art Resin, will let me, me um, make other products. Because if they don't sell, then you can't make, then, uh, then they won't trust you, right? Okay, are you in the Dundas Hamilton area? Yes, we're in Dundas. That's in, that's um, an hour west of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and it's in full lockdown, basically. And who knows how long that's gonna be. It's gonna be a long time still. And last question, bubbles, porridge stir, bubbles. What do you suggest? Stirring causes too many bubbles. I mean, bubbles, stirring is just gonna make bubbles, so, so sorry, you can't get out of that um, Louise Collette. Okay, now for today. Today, what I'm going to do is I have three things I wanted to do. One of them is, um, my daughter's always been asking me to resin this for her. So I'm gonna resin this. All I'm gonna do is set it down on this plastic that is on this table. And I'm gonna let the resin just pour off the edges everywhere and get all over here. Then the next day I'm gonna come and I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife and trim it. And that'll be perfect, Zoe will be happy. The second thing I'm gonna do is, I should probably get some more of this wood. I have a bunch of just interesting pieces of wood that I just wanted to um, continue to coat in resin. And they're just turning into like these, almost like plastic manufactured items. So I'm just gonna put some more resin on that. I have a bunch of weird pieces of wood I'm doing that with. Uh, these are neat. So we have the, on artresin.com, we have a coaster kit where you can, everything you need in the kit to make these. We call them Petri dishes. We stole that name from Josie Lewis, J-O-S-I-E-L-E-W-I-S. I love her to bits. I love you to bits, Josie Lewis. Um, I don't know if she invented this or, or what, but everyone's doing it and loving it. And it's just fun. So you get three colors in the kit and then there's color mixing guides so that you can get every color uh, in the rainbow from the three basic colors. All right, and the last thing that I want to do, this piece is about 10 years old. Look at it. And I just love this piece. Now, before I discovered epoxy resin, I was, I was fooling around with different top, different top coatings. This is a gel medium. That's all it is, a clear gel medium that I painted on a bunch of times to kind of get like a really thick coat over top of this painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a coat of art resin over top of this gel medium. And then I'll just love it even more, okay? And, we're, and I'm more organized this week. If you have any questions, let me know. Again, I wish I could play music in the background of these videos. And take a breath. Stretch. Oh, man. So we got these six chickens. So much fun. And uh, my and the kids and the chickens just bond. Just they just love each other. It's just so neat to see like kids walk up to chickens and chickens and they don't mind each other. It's just like normal. Okay, let's do this. Gloves. So first thing, find out how much epoxy resin am I going to use. This is... Now, we made artresin.com slash calculator, so you don't have to do the math. But I'm, I can't go on my phone because I'm recording, so I'm going to have to do some math. So I'm going to just say it's 2 feet by 3 feet, even though it's a bit less. 
So that's six square feet. And I'll mix up. I know a 32, a 32 ounce kit covers eight square feet. That's gonna give me extra. So I'm just gonna mix up a 32 ounce kit of art resin. So 16 resin, 16 hard resin. Okay, that's a great plan. I need like a, uh, a smart way to take you with me. So funny, my husband bought six chickens. Oh, great. Yeah, chickens are so much fun. And the eggs are so neat and anyways. My chickens, um, here's the art resin. I'll, so I'm just trying to use up used bottles. So that's uh, 16, I'll use a bit more. Oh my gosh. So this, this Lego is interesting. It's for uh, creating molds. We'll have a lot more on that later. Plan on start a business selling eggs. Oh, so smart. Turn it into a business. Great idea. So I got distracted by chickens. The one thing I'm worried about is there's some creature getting into the cage at night and lifting off the lid of their food and eating it. <sighs> Problems, eh? Okay. You know what? I can't hold this phone and do this. I need some, something. Okay, resin. We'll start with, so I'm doing 16 ounces of resin, 16 ounces of hardener, and I'll leave plenty for these three things. Almost there. Okay, good. I'm gonna pour this all into this bigger bucket. It's easy for stirring. So every week we're gonna uh, we give out a petri kit or some resin if you just use the hashtag art resin on Instagram. Sorry, I missed that. There was a question there. All right, and then I just leave this one upside down and I'll be able to peel out when it cures. All right, the three minutes of stirring time. It's 
some ASMR. My wife loves this stuff. Like someone pretending to like pick out your ears. I'm gonna play, just got here, love the coasters. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're just fun to make and they're just a good cra a craft, you know, something to do. I wouldn't suggest this. Our, my kids are five and three, but we let them make those coasters. They love it. They love just uh, putting color in. But they always put way too much color and then the bottom of the coaster is sticky with color, you know? Oh man. At least the weather's getting nice, hey? In uh, Southern Ontario anyways. Yeah, healthy at home. Um, I just wanted to explain something. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I don't know how the torch head's selling. I'll have to ask Ollie. Um, I didn't check. So this is uh, alcohol ink. And this is resin tint. And then resin tint we have in um, the metallics and the neons too. And they're very different. And uh, the alcohol ink is the one that sinks if you use it with white alcohol ink, which is called the ink sinker. And resin tint is just good for making colors. Alcohol ink is good for some different neat effect, effects or translucents. We really should make the packaging for the alcohol ink look a bit different because they are different. Yeah. Okay. If I get resin on this sweater, Rebecca's gonna be so pissed off. I know you answered on bubbles, but I keep having issues. Oh, pen size bubbles. Oh, interesting. Yes. Um, I've, to be honest, I feel like every once in a while that just happens and they're, they're almost like they're different than bubbles and they don't really pop. And I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to uh, our chemist about it, but then it kind of just stops happening. And there's so, I don't know, I don't even want to pretend that I know what it is because it could be so many things but it's just some chemistry going on, some extra reaction. Oh, I, I don't know, or is the product really old? Hi from Detroit, cool. Yeah, sorry, I wish I had a better answer, but it just kind of happens every once in a while, and like, crap, what is that? Um, it hasn't happened to me in a really, really 
long time. All right, so this, it, oh, so it is new, it's not old, okay. From Greece, it's so cool. Hey, from Greece. Is Greece okay? Like, is Greece coming back online, I hear? Slow and steady. All right, I think I've stirred enough. Yep. My gosh. Okay, I poured it all the resin. So that was Ur, and he, he lives in Guelph, and he gets lonely, and sometimes he comes in, and he works upstairs in the office. So we cross paths. Sometimes I get lonely, and I come in, and I work in the studio. Okay, so next we're going to spread this. And Ur is one of the, the wonderful Turkish people that work with us. I don't know, I have all these, tur this, these Turkish people in my life. Nothing wrong with that. I like Turkish people. Okay, where's my spreader? Anyone see my spreader? Okay. And see, we got these too. These are uh, corner stands. So you can get those some, uh, somewhere. Okay, so this is our resin over top of a gel medium. A 10 year old gel medium. I didn't sand it or anything. And I think it'll be fine. Good. This butterfly mask is from the dollar store. Zoe was very proud of it. Done. You want me to do the back too? Why not? Waterproof. You know what? I'll do the whole stick and everything. So this is just peel up off the plastic and I'll trim it with an exacto knife. Anything to make Zoe happy. All right, and last is this piece of wood that's one of the many just interesting pieces of wood that I've collected that I just keep coating and coating in art resin. 
and it's turning them into, they look like pieces of plastic, like hyper real or something. I don't know. So I'm just going to keep coding and coding and coding and coding and coding all of these different pieces of wood. Because that's what COVID makes you do. That's what COVID makes you do. You know? Look at me. Look what I've become. I'm coding a piece of wood. <clears throat> Isn't it great? Are you guys finding you're making more art? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm making more art, I think, yeah. That bark is so thirsty. The resin's going to keep disappearing. Yeah, I know. I don't know, there's probably already, maybe this is coat number four, but yeah, it's just gonna be like a solid piece of plastic after. Well, last, oh, I gotta torch them and then cover them from dust. Let's do that. Put some new gloves on if I can find them. I was so organized. Thank you for showing that tree bark. I was hoping. Cool. Oh, I have so many more. So next Wednesday, assuming we're all still alive, God. I will do a bunch of wood stuff from my dried wood collection. COVID fever, yeah. So the thing about, about resining wood is you want it to be really, really dry. Otherwise, with temperature changes, the wood will continue to expand and contract and, and expand and contract, and then the resin will just crack and crack and crack. Ohio, does coating a piece of wood make it waterproof suitable for outdoor patio use? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we have this, I, I took like a big, uh, a big round uh, chunk of wood, put an X and O pattern on it, Coat it in resin, and you can make all the pieces too out of wood, coat them in resin, and just leave it outside. But again, you wanna make sure that your wood is completely dry. And, yeah, you just want your wood to be dry. But like, let's say worst case scenario, my neighbor, we did his, his bar top out of wood, outdoor bar top out of wood. Um, after a couple winters in Canada, yeah, two to three year old dried bark, nice, sweet. After a couple winters, a crack opened up in the wood and it split the resin. So what we did is we just filled in the crack with more resin, sanded it down, resined it, and it looks perfect again. So if, if you have something that's resin that's outside, um, and if something happens, you can always just fix it with resin. You guys got me excited about uh, talking about wood. I'm gonna take you down to my wood pile. One of the wood piles. So. Okay, I got so excited and I ran downstairs and apparently the internet's good down there. Ah, oh, next Wednesday. But yeah, there's lots of cool stuff you can do with wood. Let me torch. Attach my flame spreader. Ollie, how many of these do I have to sell for you to just stop bugging me about them? Hmm? There's a whole bunch of resin pooling at the bottom of that, so I'm gonna go grab a cool piece of wood and then rub resin on it. I'll be right back.
Okay, I got a whole bunch of stuff. So see what I was talking about? I have a piece that has two to three resin layers, but I ran out of resin for a few months. Yeah, you can add layers for the rest of your life. You can be on your deathbed adding another layer. See, so this is for outdoor use. Now these are just some other interesting pieces of wood that I'm just turning to like plastic. So I'll put another coat on this one. I thought it looked like a little uh, fairy house or something. Can you just see a little creature walking in there? Look what this COVID's done to me. And then this was just a neat piece of wood. So I'm just soaking that. And this was the last piece of wood that I grabbed. I love wood, that is so cool. Is it safe? Like for fish tank, great questions. One second. Um, see like this whole crack got filled in? I don't know if you can see. But this is a clock my uncle made. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I'm really into collecting just pieces of wood. Maybe next Wednesday will be Wood Wednesday. I'll do a live video with just tons of different wood stuff. Maybe I, oh, I wish I could bring someone in. <sighs> okay, anyways, oh, is it safe for in fish tanks? Um, well, I was thinking about do it, this thing. Um, this is a terrible joke. So between resin and epoxy. Let me tell my bad joke first. And then remind me if I forget the difference between resin and epoxy. Um, so my bad joke is about, uh, fish tanks. So I thought that we could put a, uh, on the label of our bottle. It says something like, um, proudly tested on animals because we put our art resin things in fish tanks with fish and then the fish don't die. Based on, based on all the data, um, as long as you like measure really carefully and mix really well and everything cures, then it's good for in aquariums with fish. And I really wanted to do a bunch more work on that, um, and get a nice big aquarium for in the office and stuff and, and learn a lot about that. The science says that yes, it is fine. Um, we just haven't delved deep into it. But if uh, I can talk to our chemist as well, more about this aquarium thing, if you're really interested, because it's something that I'm really interested in too. Okay, well, thanks everyone. Um, let me know what you think about the proudly tested on animals tagline for aquariums. And makes sense, yeah. And uh, have a good rest of the week. I'll see you next Wednesday with a bunch of wood and I'll try and answer and answer any other questions, but thanks for watching. Stay safe. Call your friends and family. Um, do, uh, do some form of exercise. What else are we supposed to do? Take vitamin C. Um, yeah. Oh yes. What's the difference between resin and epoxy? Let me think about this. Is the difference between resin and epoxy? I don't know what the difference is between resin and epoxy.
is no, cause yeah, yeah. See you later, black crow. Um, it's called epoxy resin. Sometimes it's referred to just epoxy. Sometimes, and it's not that one half epoxy, one half resin, cause it's the the. The, it's resin is the one side. It's resin is the one side, and then there's a catalyst, which is the hardener. But that isn't called epoxy. So for when you have a resin and a catalyst, it's called epoxy resin, as opposed to, to like polyester resin. I'm not sure. I'll uh, get back to you on that. Okay. I'm going to go drive through Tim Hortons and get... Uh, latte and then give my chickens some uh, mealworm treats bye maria bye everyone this was fun so nice talking to you and getting me and thanks for getting me back in the studio to do some stuff it's all because of you bye bye